Today I'm going to a place on the East Coast, right off the coast of Massachusetts, an island next to a town called Edgartown. It's this island here, Chappaquiddick Island, and the specific place I'm going to is this house right here. Now, for some reason, Chappaquiddick Island does not allow Google Earth to go down to Street View, so we're going to have to do it from up here. But this house right here is where it all started. Now I'm going to show you what the house used to look like. Here's a picture of it. You can see it's a quaint little island home. It has a little angle back there. It has a chimney over here. And now I'm going to show you a picture of it that was taken from behind the house, from this area over here where the finger is pointing. And that would be this picture here. And from this angle, you can see it has a chimney over here. You can see the road out here. There's a door here. The main structure's here. And then there's that little angle over there. Now when we go back to Google Earth, you can see that there have been some modifications to this place, but this is the same place. You can see the main structure here. You can see where that little angle was. And where the chimney used to be, they obviously have torn it down and put this little addition here. They also extended this angle that used to run to about here. They extended it out to here. Now you can see right here, you can see the difference in coloration here from this roof to that roof. So it's obviously an addition. But this is where it all started. It began here in this place. And this place was known as the Lawrence Cottage. And the date was July 18, 1969. This was two days before Neil Armstrong and Edward Aldrin set foot on the moon. It was Senator Ted Kennedy, the youngest brother of President John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy, who was assassinated while running for president. And of course, JFK was assassinated while president. He was having a party here. There were six married men, a guy named Joel Gargan, Kennedy's cousin, another guy named Paul Markham, who was a former U.S. attorney for Massachusetts, a guy named Charles Treader, another attorney who was a friend of the Kennedys, a guy named Ray LaRosa, who was a sailing buddy to the Kennedy family, and a guy named John Crimmins, who was Senator Ted Kennedy's part-time driver. They were having a party here for six Single women from the ages of 23 to 28 years old, they were known as the Boiler Room Girls. These were young, beautiful, intelligent girls who worked very hard on Robert Kennedy's campaign for the presidency before his assassination. Now, they were just supposed to have a celebration reunion with him. But at one point late in the evening, Ted Kennedy abruptly stood up and asked for the keys to his 1967 Oldsmobile Delmont 88 from John Cummings, his driver. John Cummings gave him the keys. Ted Kennedy and Mary Jo Kopechny walked out the front door, got into the car, and drove away. And what happened was they came down this road. So here's the house. They drove down here, got to this area. Ted Kennedy kind of went straight and stopped. And about that same time, there was a sheriff's deputy who was off duty, who just got off duty from Edgartown. It was about 1240 between 1240 and 1245 when he came driving here and he saw the black car come up kind of stopped this way and he thought that they might need some help so he stopped his vehicle got out started walking toward them with his uniform on he said that there were two people in the car there was a man driving and a woman passenger and when they saw him the driver backed up and out and then took off down this road at a high rate of speed the sheriff's deputy whose name was Christopher Look got three out of the six numbers from the license plate he said there was an L and then their numbers started with a 7 and ended with a 7. And Kennedy's license plate was L72807. So, Kennedy and Mary Jo Kopechny went screaming down this road pretty quick. Most likely because ten, Ted Kennedy didn't want to get caught in the car with law, by law enforcement with a young woman being a married man and a senator and drunk. He didn't want to be caught by law enforcement in a car with a woman that he most likely was planning on having sex with. And they came flying down this road at a pretty high rate of speed. A lady living in this house by the name of Miss Malm, I think her first name was Pierre, but her last name was Malm, M-A-L-M, said she heard a car go past the house at a high rate of speed sometime after midnight. Now, if you look, coming down this road, you see this bridge here. That's Dyke Bridge, and this is Poocha Pond. I think it's pronounced Poocha or Pocha Pond. And if you look, it doesn't go straight across. There's an angle right where the bridge meets the road. So if you're coming through here kind of quick and you don't see that angle, you're not going to make it. There were also no railings on this bridge at that time. It was also said that a lot of the locals who fish here and go over this bridge go over it very slow. They said that they would stop, 
make sure they're lined up, and then go over it very slow and careful. While Ted Kennedy came screaming through here, trying to get away from that sheriff's deputy because he didn't want a scandal to begin. And when he got to this area right in here, his car kind of hit the bridge right here, flew off into the water, went in nose first, flipped upside down with the front of the car now pointing west and the back of the car pointing east while it was upside down. Ted Kennedy said he got out, tried to get Mary Jo Kopechny out, so he said that may or may not be true. We'll never know. But he said he couldn't get her out, so what he did was he went down this road, and instead of stopping 150 yards down the road and asking the lady in this house to call the police and, and call for help, he went past the house. He said he didn't see the house, but the lady said that there was a light on where you could see the house. These people also said they had lights on in their houses that could be seen from the road. But Kennedy didn't stop there. What he did is he went all the way back down the road, walked back down here, and he even went past this building right here, which is a fire station. This is the Chappaquiddick Island Fire Station. Now, who better to call for help than first responders? Well, right here. But he didn't do that. He went right past the fire station and right back to the Lawrence Cottage right here. Now, standing outside the Lawrence Cottage, leaning up against the tree, was Ray LaRosa. And he said that he heard Ted Kennedy say, Get me Joe, better get Paul too. Joe Gorgon, his cousin, and Paul Markham, the former U.S. attorney for Massachusetts, they were in the house. Ray LaRosa went into the house, got him, and when Joseph and Paul, when Joe Gargan and Paul Markham came out, they found Ted Kennedy slumped in the back seat of the rented white Valiant vehicle that they had, and his first words to them were, The car has gone over the bridge, and Mary Jo is in it. Get me back to Edgartown. Now, they jumped in the car. They drove him back to Edgartown. Well, drove him this way, and instead of going down this way to try and get the poor woman out. They didn't. They went left all the way down here back to the ferry, but the ferry quit operating at midnight. So, Ted Kennedy said he jumped in the water and swam across. That may or may not be true. He also said the tide took him and pulled him all the way down this area. He got out by the lighthouse right here, walked up here toward the Harbor View Hotel and made it back to his room, which was the Shire Town Inn, which used to be here or may still be. Let's check. This is supposed to be the location of the Shire Town Inn where Ted Kennedy was staying the night. He went in, changed his clothes, came out with dry clothes, saw the groundskeeper there and said, hey, what's going on? There's noise and I can't sleep. In other words, he lied. And, uh, then the next day, Joseph Gargan and Paul Markin met him, and they went back to the ferry right here. And they floated across about 9 o'clock, and the ferry operator said he dropped them off here about 9 o'clock and that they hung around this little building here, and there was a payphone in it, and they were using it. And he said that he dropped them off, they went here using the payphone, he loaded up more vehicles, more people, floated back across, unloaded the people in the vehicles, loaded some more people and some more vehicles, floated back across to Chappaquiddick. It was around 9.30, and when he got there that time, he said to them, hey, there was an accident on the island. Did you hear about it? They turned to him and said, yeah, we just heard about it. So Ted Kennedy and Paul Markham, the former U.S. attorney from Massachusetts, get back on the ferry. They go back across, and then they made their way up here, to this building right here, which is the, let's go look at it. The Edgartown Town Hall, which is also the place at that time where the chief of police was stationed. He confessed what he did, and it turned into quite a big scandal. So, now what he ended up doing, of course, being a politician, he lied. Let me turn this north. Go back to Chappaquiddick. Now, what he said was, is that he was taking Miss Kopechny back to the ferry so she could go back to her hotel room because she was tired. But there were some serious problems with that testimony. Number one, Miss Kopechny left her purse and the key to her room at the Lawrence Cottage. Number two, the ferry quit operating at midnight.
He said it was 11.15 when he went through there, which we know is not true because the sheriff's deputy, Christopher Look, saw them here at between 12.40 and 12.45, and it would be accurate because he knew what time he gets off of work, and it was after midnight. So Ted Kennedy was lying mainly because, I believe, that he was going to have sex with Mary Jo Kopechny. Here's the senator, married, a U.S. senator, going to have sex with a 28-year-old campaign helper. So he got in his car with her, drove out to this area, was probably going to go down here to the beach and have sex with her in the car, but they never made it. Ended up going off the bridge. He was drunk, driving, killed her, and they never made it to the beach. Also, an autopsy was never done on Mary Jo Kopechny, but they did say she had a .9 alcohol level. I'm sorry, a .09 alcohol level, which back then I think the legal alcohol level was 1.0, but .9 is still very drunk, so she probably got drunk. Ted Kennedy was always drunk back then, and they decided they were going to have sex in the car. So there you have it. The Ted Kennedy, Chappaquiddick Island, Mary Jo Kopechny killing on Chappaquiddick Island from Google Earth.